Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. Today I'm going to make one of my autumn cards and what I've done is I've used the Love of Leaves, I've used one of the stamps and one of the dies and some of the um, paper from one of the other autumn collections but everything with Stampin' Up always just mixes and matches so perfectly. And I've used this little curtain fold I know sometimes in North America it's called a drapery fold as well, but it's just a simple piece of designer series paper cut and folded and it makes this beautiful sort of back in layer. And so let me show you how we made it. It really is an easy card to make. So first of all, I've got myself a piece of very vanilla card base and for this card, because I was just experimenting and sort of making a card, I actually had my card cut the other way. So, but as you know, when it's a card that stands like this, I like to use the card cut on the sort of the, the longer piece. So I'm just going to have it slightly different because it's going to be cut the other way. And then I've got the designer series paper and it is a really pretty paper. Most of the sides have a foiled side and then um, just a planer side, but the plain sides are beautiful. See, this is the plain side and it's so pretty. So I've got myself this paper ready. And I'm going to use this design. I'm just going to get my paper trimmer and I'm going to chop off a four inch piece. And on your card, you need to make sure that the orientation of the paper goes this way, because if there's a pattern, once you fold it and cut it, you don't want the pattern to be going upwards when your card is lengthwise. So I'm just gonna cut a simple four inch piece off. And that's the only sort of piece that you need. So I put the rest away and then I'm going to cut this down from a 12 inch strip to an 11 and a half inch strip. So I'm just chopping half an inch off and that's it. But keep this little piece because we'll put that inside. Okay. And then next you need to score your DSP. If you have a scoreboard, you can do it on there. If you have this paper trimmer, you can score on here. And while I've got my paper trimmer out, that's what I'm going to use. But the scoreboard works perfectly well. Okay, so put your piece in and make sure it's going the, the right orientation. And what I'm going to do first is score it from this end at three inches. So I'm just lining it up at three. And with my score blade, I'm just going down there. Then I'm going to do it at four. Then I'm going to do it at, uh, let me think, six. Oh, let me just pick up my paste paper that I just dropped. Oh. And then seven. And then nine. And ten. And that's it. That's all the scoring done. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to cut the angle on this paper. If I take a piece that I've already cut and scored, you can see that it's got this angled edge. And I find it easier to cut that after I've done the scoring. So what you need to do is, here's your piece that you've just scored, we're going to measure down this side just one inch. I'm going to turn it round to do it, just because this is the easiest way. So I'm going to line it up at one inch, and where the little track is, I'm just going to put a pencil mark. Now, if you don't have this particular paper trimmer and you can't work it out like that, just take a ruler and measure down to the one inch line. And then check, because you need where your first score line was, and that's at the three inch one. So just remember that it's going to be the very first score line and we're going to line it up in the trimmer. I don't know if you'll be able to see all of it actually. We're going to line it up so that that little mark that we made at one inch 
and the three inch line are both in the track. I'm going to close it up. Now, we want to cut along there, but sometimes I find that if I cut from the bottom on an angle like this, I start and I get the paper just ripped a little bit or folded. So I'm just moving my blade sort of onto where the DSP already is. And then I'm going to cut up and cut down. And that way you don't get a, a little crumply edge or anything. Okay. I think that's all we need to cut, so I don't need the trimmer anymore. And we'll get rid of that piece of paper there. And I'm just going to erase that little mark. I just don't want to be able to see it on the card. Keep this little scrap that we cut off because there will be other things that you can make just with this. Okay. So now our curtain fold. I always start from this end. I know some demonstrators may do this differently, but I always start this way. And I fold up and I make sure that these edges along this top match. And then I fold it back for the next one. And then I just carry on folding. So folding it down and I'm folding it back. And you can see the curtain fold starting to appear. Then I'm going to fold this down, make sure that it matches at the edges. And then I'm just going to fold it back. Now, if you're not quite sure of where those fold lines were, check my blog because the measurements are always on there. Okay, so there we've got our curtain fold. And depending on which way you want to cut it, depends on how much of the DSP that you see. If you wanted to have this side and just a tiny little bit of the um, metallic side, you can do that too, but uh, I like the metallic side to be on the front for this. But I like just that little accent of the other colours from the back. Now, I'm going to glue this down. But you can see on this one, I don't glue it all the way down. I like the dimension of having this part of the, the fold stick out. So I've only got my wet glue and I put just a little bit, maybe about an inch down. And I put those on the one inch scores. So there's the first one, fold it over. Then the next little one inch score, fold it over. And then the next little one inch score, fold it over. And just hold that for a second for your glue to dry. You can use um, something like the stamping seal or you can use glue dots even. Okay. Then I turn it over because I want these sides to be glued down a little bit as well. So I just pop a little bit on that one inch side again, all the way along. And that way you know that you've got, you know, a good hold on it. It's not going to pop undone or anything. You can go over that with your score tool or your um, bone folder if you want to. Now, next of all, I'm going to put a little piece of ribbon over. And you could make the ribbon go all the way over the back and tie up on the front. But I'm just going to put it behind that DSP curtain fold. And this time, last time I used this copper thread, which is from the, the same suite as the paper. And it, it comes as a pack of two with the mint macaron basket weave and this little copper thread. But this time I'm going to use the faux suede in the early espresso. And that's with the, um, the world of good suite. So I want to pop this on here and I won't do it with my wet glue, I'm, I'm going to use my stamping seal. I'm just going to put some of the, oops, some of the stamping seal at that side and some at this side. And when you put your ribbon on, you don't want it too far up at the top. I put it about an inch, an inch and a quarter down and that gives me enough room to get my leaf on. So I'm only eyeballing it but I want it to be sort of an inch to an inch and a quarter. 
and I'm just going to put it all the way across and then fold this piece over as well and that will hold your ribbon in strong enough that you know, it isn't going to come out, it isn't going to pop out of the sides or anything. And I'm going to add that onto my card base. So um, now I'm just going to use my wet glue. I'm not gluing it all the way down on these pieces, but on the larger rectangle, I am gluing all that down. Okay. And you'll find that this fits exactly the length of your card, sort of all across here. So you can make it, push it up so that it's right at the top, nice and straight. There we go. Okay, and there's the base of your card already made. And next, we're going to do our sentiment. And I like to put this piece on first before I do the sentiment, so I know exactly how much space I've got. If you don't feel comfortable stamping uh, when you've already got this on, what you can do, let me turn it over and take this other piece. What you can do is just sort of hold it on and work out where your space is going to be. Having said that, I'll probably make a right mess of it now. <laughs> Never mind, let's see. So I've got early espresso ink because it matches my ribbon and the colours on the back here. And I've chosen, I've just chosen one of the sentiments. I chose the I thought of you today, but actually all of these sentiments would fit in. The long one wouldn't, but these ones would. So I'm just gonna stand up to stamp, just so that I can see where, I, where I'm trying to stamp and trying to make it straight. It's a very pretty font, this one. Okay, so the next part we need is this little leaf. Let's move that out of the way while it dries. I've cut myself a couple of three inch strips of the brushed metallic card. And this comes in the pack, you get three different colors. So I don't know if the camera will pick it up. So I have to put them so that the same way. Okay, so you've got that lighter one, almost like a champagne colour. And then you've got the darker one too. And on the first one, oops, stuck on the back there. On the first one, I used this darker one. And this time I'm using the more gold coloured one. And it's really easy to cut out. I've got my cut and emboss machine ready. So I'm gonna pop that there. Check that that's, I know that looks really big on the camera, I'm sorry. But I've got the platforms and I'm going to do die cutting. So it says I need this one and then the die cutting thinner one face down. So I'm gonna pop that on there. This is the thinner one, and it says place die cutting edge down. So I'm going to put it this way, and then it says to have the two clear plates. So there's the first clear plate, and I'm going to put my card in, and then I'll put the dies in. And you can use just whichever ones you like. I'm going to use this larger one, but it would look really pretty too if you did some of the smaller ones and maybe put two or three of the leaves there. So I've got the stitched edgelet and I'm also going to use this middle piece and this gives you uh, a really nice effect on the leaf itself. So I'm going to pop, pop my little piece there and then this piece just goes inside and you can do them both at the same time. You don't have to cut one and then take it out and then put that piece on. You just do it both at the same time. I'm going to put the other clear plate back on and just roll it through there. And you only need to roll it through once. I did find that on my big shot, I think because it was maybe getting a little bit older, I had to roll it through and then roll it back again. But this, I love this new machine. I find it so easy. 
Okay, so let's pop those little dies back. Put them back in the box. I do like this piece too. It gives you quite a lot of texture on a card and I've seen quite a few cards on Pinterest where they've used that sort of at the bottom of the card here and then they've maybe had their sentiment and a picture up at the top and that looks really effective. Saves you having to do another layer of something too. Okay, let's get our card back. So here we are, here's the one that I've just cut out. And can you see how you get that that beautiful effect on it doesn't sort of it doesn't make it so that you can see through it but it is just stitched and I think that's really pretty okay so now I need a little bow and I've already pre-tied my bow because sometimes when I tie them on camera you would think that I'd, I'd never tied a bow in my life <laughs> so I can tie a bow really easily off camera put the camera on and honestly it's like somebody with three hands and one finger or something. I, I just can't get it to work. So rather than mess about, I made it already. And then just with a glue dot, I'm gonna pop that on the back. And then that's ready to go on our leaf. I don't need it just for a moment because I need to put the leaf on first. And my leaf I'm gonna put over here and I want it to go just over the ribbon. So. And I, I want it so that these three leaves are on the first strip and this one will be on the first fold. So these ones, I'm going to put a dimensional on the back of them. So that way they're going to be level with the rest of the card and it will give it a little bit of dimension. And I'm just going to pop one in the middle. Let's take those backings off. And this leaf here, which will be this one when it's laid down, whoops, I'm also going to put a little bit of wet glue on because I want it to stick onto that fold. I'm not going to put too much, just a little bit. And then making sure that just these three leaves are on this piece and this is on that first fold. I'm going to stick it down. I didn't bother putting any adhesive under that one because I didn't think it needed it. Okay, and then last thing of all is our little bow. I want it to, I wanted it to look like the ribbon was tied around the stem of the leaf. So just adding that on the top. And there we are. That's our card all finished. On the inside, remember I had that little strip of the DSP left. I'm going to pop that in and you could use it either way. In fact, I think I'm going to put the brown side down. I'm just going to put that in. You could stamp some more leaves on there if you wanted. Or you could use one of the other sentiments for the inside. So that would look pretty too. And there we are. That's my, my card all made. Now, when I was looking, I had cut this piece of paper first that I showed you earlier. And I realised how pretty it would be on a darker background. Uh, this one isn't glued down, but you can get the idea. Let me move those over there. And then if we've had sort of a piece of ribbon across and one of the... Oh, let's get this leaf. I can't pick it up. There we go. One of the other leaves. That would look really nice. And you could stamp on here with the espresso ink to put your sentiment but what I really liked was it on the espresso itself on this early espresso cardstock just look how that makes those little acorns pop okay. and then maybe with this and one of the lighter colour leaves I think that would be so pretty and then if you embossed your sentiment here in maybe the gold embossing powder, I think that would be so pretty. So there we are. That's my little curtain fold or drapery fold. This is a style that when I first started making cards, maybe 
16, 17 years ago, it was one of the first more difficult cards that I made. And um, I made all of my Christmas cards one year with this sort of drapery curtain fold. Uh, and I was so proud of myself because up till then I'd just been doing simple stamping. I hadn't had layers of anything. I hadn't had lots of embellishments. I just had learned how to do these little folds. And I think it was a book that I'd got from Michael's where it had you know, 50 different card designs and it showed you how to do this. And I thought it was just the bee's knees. And honestly, I don't know if I've ever made it since. So when I was looking today and looking at this paper, I'd started folding the paper up and it just reminded me of those curtain fold cards that I had made before. So that's why it's a curtain fold today. But thank you so much for watching me. I really do appreciate all of your support. And I love it when you comment on the videos and if you ask a question or even if you make the card, I love it if you just post that picture either on my Facebook or on my blog or even on my YouTube channel. It really means the world to me. So thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you all again really soon. Bye bye.